So what's happening with this particular case and what could happen with our amino acid system is that if heat flows from the system to the surroundings, well, heat is the random motion of molecules, we are increasing the entropy of the surroundings. Delta S of the surroundings is greater than zero. Another argument we can make is what do we do to stretch this rubber band? Well, we're putting work into our system. The system is interacting with the surroundings. So when delta S of the system plus delta S of the surroundings is greater than zero, then the second law is satisfied. Here's another example. Water in a pond in the wintertime in a cold place, probably not here. If water freezes at zero degrees C, what happens to the entropy of our system? If we go from a liquid to a solid, hey, the entropy of our system is decreasing. But in that process, heat flows out of the water as the ice forms, and the entropy of the surroundings increases. When the sum is greater than zero, the second law is satisfied. Here are some common mistakes that creationists make when they attempt to uh, apply the second law, or when they misapply the second law. They define the pre-life ocean as an isolated system. It was not. They fail to define the universe as the system plus the surroundings, depending on which definition of the second law they apply. And they ignore changes to the entropy of the surroundings and their effect on the universe. Remember, the universe is the system plus the surroundings. OK, I'm going to go back. This is the same quote I read before. OK, going from a Big Bang to a structured universe, non-life to life, simpler to higher order life, all involve a tremendous increase in complexity. Complexity of what? The system? The surroundings? The universe? He's being vague here. Is it purposely vague or is it through ignorance? I don't know. Left to themselves, things become less complex. What things? This is a fast and loose definition and people buy it because they're not aware of the second law of thermodynamics. It's overly simplistic and, and ignores vital components of the second law. What things? Complexity of what? Systems? Surrounding? Universe? These people, when they make a scientific argument, must ap apply their science correctly and define their terms. Delta S of the universe is the system plus the surroundings. The system entropy can decrease as long as the entropy of the universe is greater than zero. I've got another quote. As I was researching to give this talk, I saw a quote by uh, Henry Morris. I heard his name mentioned before. Okay, since the vast system of the hypothetically evolving biosphere as a space-time continuum seems to lack both a program and mechanism, it is clearly precluded by the second law. Now, I know it's Sunday morning and it's early. Let me, uh, let me translate this before you use uh, too, mu too much uh, thought to try to translate this. Blah, 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 blah. It is clearly precluded by the second law. This man is saying nothing. When someone gives you a scientific, this is pseudoscientific sleight of hand. Don't look over here. So make these people define their terms. Science is a, straight, is a straightforward endeavor. There should be no misdirection involved, yet people still attempt it. OK, to conclude, the second law of thermodynamics does not in itself prove that complex proteins spontaneously formed from amino acids. I don't know how it happened. But the second law does allow for this process to have occurred. Any scientific argument that you make must be correct. Now, I've got just a philosophical note. It's related to the second law. People often ask, well, gosh, you know, human beings are very complex. They're complex animals, complex processes involved. How can the second law allow us to exist the way we are? We don't exist for who we are, but for what we do. We are ordered, yet we create chaos. The process of metabolism converts sugar and oxygen into carbon dioxide and water, and we give off a lot of heat. Now, here's a chemical equation here. Don't, don't be frightened by it. We got sugar plus oxygen converts carbon dioxide into water. Here's some numbers. Gives off a lot of heat, and the entropy of this reaction is positive. So we, in fact, are entropy-generating machines. Okay? So as long as we generate en entropy, we are going to be able to exist. And I think for as much chaos as Mr. Randy produces, I think he's going to be around forever. OK? <laughs> Any questions? In the, I don't know how much time I have left. Three minutes for questions. Yes? OK, the question is, was it, was it polypeptides or amino acids? What was the role of RNA, ribonucleic acid, in the uh, formation of life? The answer is, 
Okay, I'm not a biochemist, I don't know. But I did ask one of my biochemist buddies. And that is really leading edge stuff. The, a long time ago, people talked about the role of RNA and they were summarily dismissed. Well, since they've unlocked the genome, RNA is coming back to the forefront. Personally, I don't know anything about it. Now, I know what I know and I know what I don't know. I've been fooled by every single magic trick that has been performed in this, in this entire meeting, okay? It had me fooled. I wish I could give you a better answer for your RNA uh, argument, but I'm not a biochemist. But I think, uh, yes. Okay, one, one more question. Yes. Uh, I've got a coworker who uh, basically hit me with the same thing. Uh, he's a creation science person. And um, he was telling me that uh, I, I was foolish to believe in evolution because of this whole second law. And I said, um, you know, I understand what the second law says. And without having to go into a lot of chemistry, I, I just asked him if he believed in snowflakes because you know, they just start out with water vapor, and I'm from Wisconsin, I know, you know, snowflakes all have six sides, and, they, and they, they definitely have a structure, and they have order, and, you know, they, they form spontaneously. I said, do you think that there's something about the second law that prevents snowflakes from forming, and he didn't really have a good answer, so you don't necessarily have to know about chemistry to, to prevent an argument, you know, present an argument for against Absolutely right. He was asking about the formation of snowflakes. And in that case, you're going from a gas, which is very disordered, to a solid, to the snowflakes. Well, what's happening to our system? Our system is becoming more ordered. But what happens is heat leaves the gas as it goes to a solid. So our, the, our surroundings, the entropy of our surroundings increases. So, so the sum of the system plus the surroundings is greater than zero. That's why that process is allowed. And I thank you very much. <clears throat>